Hey, how are you guys doing? My name is Kevin Devani, the Total Connector. Um, well, I'm really, really looking forward to my next special guest, Julian Liniger, uh, the CEO of Relay.ch. It's a new platform that is really has been really overdue because, if you, as you remember, a while ago, uh, get. Uh, Git, Git Betray of based in Netherlands had to close down the activities because of you know regulatory pressures and all these issues and problems. But now we have a you know in Europe uh, made in Switzerland uh, uh, a new platform. It's easy. It's user friendly. I tested it myself, and you can do you know one time buys or one time uh, you know purchases of Bitcoin or recurring uh, auto DCA auto uh, you know withdrawals. So yeah, check them out and really looking forward to, to this talk. And also, you know, uh, uh, ask me a little bit about um, the background of Switzerland, you know, what, what's so special about Switzerland. I've always been curious because I've never been there. So if you have any questions, let me know afterwards. Uh, hope you're gonna love this and uh, make sure you follow me on Twitter, subscribe please on my uh, podcast platforms and YouTube and follow me on Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, Telegram, or what have you. Thank you so much and have fun. Welcome to the show, Julian Liniger. How are you doing? Uh, very good, thanks. How are you, man? Thanks, man. Uh, Julian, so uh, you are the CEO of, of Relay. If I, do I pronounce it? Because I never knew you know, how to pronounce it. Is it Relay or Relay? Oh, everybody has his own version. I, I like Relay, but uh, some people say Relay, uh, Relay, uh, you know, dep probably depends where you come from. Relay, Relay would, was the idea originally. Okay, fantastic. All right, so Julian, um, the let's 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 um, talk a little bit about the background story. Like, um, and, um, I never had the opportunity to test at that time, and you know when GetBit was still, uh, you know, having its activities, and then they had to close down because of whatever regulatory pressure. Um, what was the intentional motivation uh, doing this? And what was like, uh, did you have like, you guys in Switzerland, uh, you know, it's a made in Switzerland company and project, so it's great. But uh, can you can you tell a little bit about yourself, your management team, what was the intention motivation behind it? And uh, what were the challenges um, setting it up? Yeah, yeah. So the, the main intention is really to make Bitcoin finally easy. We think, you know, that it's still too hard to invest in Bitcoin today. So uh, when we started off, like the, the, the people around me, uh, like my environment, we, we started off uh, getting interested in Bitcoin, uh, probably, you know, 20, 2015, 2016. And then we obviously you get um, kind of this reputation in your in your uh, social surrounding. Oh, this is the Bitcoin dude. This is the Bitcoin guy. Let's ask him, right? Mm -hmm. So, so many people. Like I, I felt like thousand people asked me in in these years. You know, where can I buy Bitcoin easily? You, how can I do this? And so I started explaining them um, how how it works. You know, you have to go to this website, and then you have to make an account, and then you have to get verified and submit all these documents, and then you have to kind of do it manually. You send the money there, and and, but then you don't you don't leave it there because it's not safe. You have to download it to a wallet. But then the wallet, you know, you have to create it first as well. Then you have another password and another private key. And so this is nobody really got it. And I, I, I took the time for for some of them to really explain them in detail and set it all up for them. But even then, it was for most of them was complicated. And I thought, you know, I cannot do this for every one of my friends. Um, I even started making videos and tutorials and all that uh, all that stuff. But you know. It, in the end, it's not. It, it, it just didn't work. It was too complicated. So I was uh, on the look of, you know, where is this app that makes it finally easy? And I couldn't find it myself. And me personally, I also wanted to do uh, regular investments, you know, so making uh, making dollar cost averaging very easy, um, you know, on an automatic uh, basis. Um, and and I just didn't find the tool that I was looking for. Also, the, the, the whole community that I was in, you know, the Bitcoin Association Switzerland, uh, I, I asked a lot of people of, uh, of this group and they also didn't kind of know a good, a good um, easy, all out of one hand solution. So we thought, you know, why, why not just, just build one? So that's, um, that's where we started, end of 2018. And, and now we are here finally live since 10 days. So it took us one and a half years to really uh, get our shit together and, uh, and and go live but yes now here we are and we're 
we are, we are happy so far. Yeah, it's uh, really congratulations. It's, I think it's overdue to have a, um, uh, yeah, a KYC less um, thing because the KYC, the KYC, I think for those who, who don't know, I mean, it's this know your customer procedure is, is such a pain in the ass because you have to give up so much data and uh, the, the, you know, the, the risk that I see uh, with this, all this data, I mean, of course, it's, you know, it's comp, it's comp, uh, it's comfortable, it's, uh, it's easy, um, uh, even if you go like on, on, the, uh, you know, one of those well known exchanges such as Kraken, but still, it's like, in, in the back of your head, it's, it's what if, what if all these data, you know, got leaked, and, you know, no. they got you, they got everything of you, you know, they got your utility, your, your address, your photo, your passport, you, they know everything about you. And uh, not so much about like, you know, regulatory agencies or whatever, but more like, uh, what if, what if this information like gets leaked to the, to criminals, you know, uh, talking about the $5 wrench attack and whatever. Uh, so I think the, the, the risk or the dangers are pretty much underrated. Uh, and um, would you say that this is also like the primary reason, the primary incentive to do this, uh, to, to set it up? Yeah, I, we've actually, why didn't we? Why did we do it KYC less? At the beginning, we were really um, thinking about you know we want to make it easy. So we want to optimize for user friendliness. All of the other things we don't care. But then on the on the on the journey that we did, actually we attracted a lot of people that were privacy focused, that were using or were interested in our solution. Not because it's easy, also because it's easy, um, but but mainly because of exactly what you described. They didn't want to give up their privacy and. Um, they they see it, they see the main value in it through um, you know not having to uh, send in all these documents and stuff because they could get leaked and everything you know they, there are a million um, different implications why uh, this is uh, this is interesting and they also are willing to pay uh, a little bit of a higher price for us we we are not competing with you know low fee zero fee um, um, solutions because we think we, we can provide the convenience and the privacy and that's worth it uh, to pay 3% uh, in transaction fee for, for a lot of our users and uh, for some not that we, we totally understand, but we provide this value and a lot of people seem to be um, willing to, to pay this. And on the same note, I would also like to mention that we are not 100% KYC less in a sense that we don't know anything about the user uh, except the the IBAN and the the public address that we create. So we create the, the seed and it's encrypted. We don't have access to it. Only the user has access to it, but then it creates a first wallet. So these two things, they are public anyway. They are public information anyway, so we know that. And then once you make a transaction from the bank, obviously our partner, Bitty, in the back end, they see uh, the name and sometimes even the address of uh, this bank customer. Um, so it's a light KYC. Uh, they, they, they do find out your name if they want to. But this um, is not, it's not stored anywhere. It's really stored with, with your bank account. So you, you did your KYC with your bank account and you know banks are here for something. They can keep um, data quite safe. Uh, de definitely protect it better than, than some shady online exchanges. Um, so, so I think, yeah, that's, uh, that, that, that makes sense. It's not total anonymous but it's just the minima, minimal KYC that you can have and you store your data not with some startup, but you store mm -hmm. it with your bank. So, you know, in times of surveillance and privacy breaches, uh, you, you state that, right, in your whatever uh, privacy policy or terms and conditions that these yeah. data, whatever minimal information is not uh, stored uh, any on any, okay. Gotcha. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, so we don't store any any information about the user, any identifiable information about the user, and also we don't have access to the funds. These are like the, the two basic premises that also will will not change. Yeah. Okay. I was recently in a Nakamoto house. Uh, it's a Bitcoin um, house, you know, where you you can whatever. Even you you do you have like sort of a Bitcoin ATMs you can buy. Bit yeah. So I I I, I talked to one of their. Uh, um, employees and, and I said, well, what's what's the fee that you have to pay in total? And he said like six percent. So mm -hmm. so when you say like three percent, it's it's I think you know definitely you know a good bargain, and especially if um, 
you know, you want to go for a KYC-less procedure. Now, let's go to the nuts and bolts. I mean, what, what's the feedback you're getting from, from people, from users? Are you, are you still sort of uh, fixing some bugs or is there sort of a, uh, you know, trial and error phase? What's... Yeah, we, we started developing, actually developing the actual mobile app that is out now. We started uh, developing 1st of April. So it's not a little bit more than three months. It's a short time. We started testing um, beginning of the middle of uh, May. So we had this one and a half months of really intensive test phase with our test community. We have a Telegram chat. We, we get a lot of feedback there. We, we already did quite some iterations and bug fixing. But then we, at one point, we just said, you know, let's let's get it out. Let's get it out to the market. Um, it's it, it, we we will obviously have all these feedback iterations anyway. Uh, still, so we still have a lot of bugs. Uh, we still get quite some bugs and future requests and and reports. We also support um, uh, requests from users. But you know, we I think it was Eric. Uh, how is how is this guy called? Reed, Reed Hoffman, the founder of LinkedIn, who said something like, "I'm not sure about the quote, but he said if you if you're not embarrassed by the first version you publish." Uh, then you you launch too late, right? So you need to, <laughs> so you need to kind of be a little bit embarrassed of it. So the, it, it it's yeah, it's it's normal, but it's and it's always that, a yeah, it's always a dynamic process, I guess. Huh? Yeah, I mean, you you, you always have like you know, just call it potential for improvement or any kind of minor fixes. Um, we get these a lot. We are still bug fixing a lot, but we also get huge positive feedback. So we were overwhelmed. You know, the first 48 hours were really crazy. When we launched 3rd of, April, uh, 3rd of July in the morning, um, we, we got so many positive uh, feedbacks on Twitter, in our chat, uh, chats, in our communities. Um, we, we, got, we, we now have more than 50 five-star reviews in both app stores. So that's amazing. Like wow. we, have, we are a 5.0 and 4.7 in the two app stores. So it, it's amazing, amazing feedback. Even though for us it's really, it's really an early version. It's still, it's still not perfect at all. Mm -hmm. Like in the next half year or year, so much will still change. It's, it's going to improve so hard. Um, but still, people are already satisfied or happy with the, with the, the result they're seeing now. Um, and we have more than 700 app downloads already in like 20 different European countries. So it really states that, or it really proves that there was a need and people are happy with what they see so far. Nevertheless, obviously, we cannot relax now. We need to uh, do a lot of bug fixing and uh, further improvements. So. Yeah, let's go. Uh, you, you mentioned those EU countries. Can you go like into demographic? I mean, not demographics, but like uh, what are most users come from? I mean, is can you see? I mean, is that like something visible or? Yeah, uh, yeah you can see it in the App Store. Uh, we don't have the, the user information directly, sure. but we can see in the App Store from where the, the Apple IDs are registered, where, where the app gets downloaded. And it's very simple, Germany. <laughs> like 60, 60, 65% Germany. It's uh -huh. crazy, yeah, I know. But maybe it has... It because has they're all insolvent, because the German Deutsche Bank is insolvent, man. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> That's maybe They it. know what's coming, you know? <laughs> so. They try to get their their fiat money into something that's safe, right? In, in no, I think German people have, have, have really woken up. I think they're really waking up to, you know, to this whole bullshit that's, uh, that's gonna probably gonna unwind, uh, you know, with the, I think that, you know, they're just more educated maybe, I don't know, or maybe just uh, mm -hmm. having already feeling the pain points, the economical yeah. monetary pain points. Yeah, maybe, and also obviously it's one of the it's it's a very big country. Um, it's it, they they have ten times more inhabitants than Switzerland, so obviously they they're probably a bigger target audience. And also we had a one big coverage already. I I I, I was invited by um, by another podcast that was uh, very influential in in Germany, and so that probably helped a lot. It got got us a lot of uh, feedback also and a lot of good reviews and stuff. So. That was probably helpful too, but yeah, it, it seems that Germany is is kind of the leader, and then the rest are um, Switzerland is probably uh, the second, um, I think, second country, and then the surrounding countries of Switzerland, so Italy, Fran uh, France, also some from from Austria. Austria. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, 
You know what I love about the Swiss? They're so uh, whatever you know, you want to, uh, whatever topic you talk. I mean, it's it's they're so self. They have got so much self determination, so much self sovereignty, right? It's it's much more. They're much more self autonomous. Um, is that something that is that a mentality thing of of Swiss people? With its cannabis policy or economics, you know, or self determination like the cantons, you know, who can decide for themselves. Yeah, yeah definitely. So the, I think the the canton culture. So Switzerland, for those who don't know, we have twenty six different cantons, and they're all small. And then we have different uh, regions within the cantons that still have different legislations sometimes and different accents. Uh, uh, so so yes, I think we are very. Yeah, so you can you can call it self sovereign and like we we uh, learn to um, yeah to to, to to live in a small community as well and that a lot of small communities together is a bigger picture but we, we we're not uh, accustomed to um, you know other countries like I don't know maybe maybe even um, Germany or others that are just one big um, one big nation we are a small nation already and then we are uh, we have this decentralized kind of uh, approach where we uh, where we can do things on a legal in in legal terms also very independently the small the small different communities so uh, yeah I think so uh, I think that that helps what other other culture cultural uh, approaches or like cultural um, traits that we have as Swiss is probably also you know the, the, the discipline we're quite disciplined. Mm -hmm. um, we, we we work a lot, Swiss people work a lot, <laughs> usually well, Germans too and Austrians too. <laughs> um, and, uh, and, and and we also, I think we, we, we are, we, we stay humble, you know, that's maybe another thing. We usually stay humble and uh, and these are all things that, that relate, especially the decent, decentralization part, but also, you know, the, the other uh, things. I think a lot of these Swiss cultural traits relate a lot um, to Bitcoin, to the Bitcoin cultural ethos. And that's not the last reason, I would say. It's, it's one of the best reasons why in Switzerland also, you know, it's, it's the, the crypto nation and a lot of, a lot of Bitcoin uh, and, and crypto activity in general uh, is in, in Switzerland. Yeah. And I, I'm hoping, I mean, this is the vision also, I guess, you know, for the future development of, of a Bitcoinized or hyper Bitcoinized world. I, I think, uh, uh, you know, I read the I read the book of Titus Gable on, on, on about uh, f uh, free private cities, and mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I, and you probably heard also about Jeff Booth. You know, the author of um, uh, the Price of Tomorrow: uh, Why uh, Why Deflation is the Key to an Abundant Future, mm -hmm. and uh, you know. Uh, I think understanding the big, I know we digress, I'm digressing a little bit, but I think it's important that I think we can learn a lot from the Swiss people and from the Swiss structure, how they, you know, how they, um, uh, um, how they develop, how they decide for themselves. And I think if more and more uh, regions or uh, let's say, let's just call them free private cities uh, develop and secede from the, you know, this bigger, uh, centralized structures uh, in a Bitcoinized world uh, will will have much more, you know, just more prosperity and 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 mm -hmm. evolution on every layer. All right, let's go back to. Uh, let me clarify something. So when 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 people within the U e uh, European Union make a payment, a SEPA payment, uh, SEPA transfer, there is no there is no. Uh, Transfer fee? Why? Right? I mean, there's no wire transfer fee. Is there? Theoretically, right. Uh, theoretically, the idea of SEPA and like 90% of all uh, European banks are within are, are, are connected to the SEPA network. Theoretically, the idea is that uh, uh, all transactions in the SEPA network are um, like uh, in in country um, transactions. So cost, the cost is very, very low, even zero usually. And, uh, and it takes only one banking day or even only a couple of hours that some banks to, to clear, uh, now, but, but, but that's the theory. Um, we've, um, al already in the first 10 days of being live, we've uh, experienced a lot of, um, uh, requests from, from people who said their bank is actually charging them the fee. And then I was like, uh, like, at least 10, 10 um, feedbacks that, that their bank charge 
charge them a fee between five and 15 euro per transaction. Wow. Even though it's SEPA to SEPA. And so a lot of them, uh, because obviously they're cool Bitcoiners and they, they say, you know, fuck banks, buy Bitcoin and let's, let's, uh, let's uh, uh, investigate that. So they helped us, they, they contacted their bank and, you know, and then now a lot of uh, discussions are happening between these um, people and the banks. Uh, why why they do that? Because the, the, probably like my that's that's a wild assumption. But my assumption is just uh, because people don't know about this that the transaction should actually be free. Um, they just uh, u- use this as an advantage and charge some additional fee. Because in, in the minds of people, you know, um, transactions cross border transactions cost money, but actually it shouldn't. Uh, for most of them, it should not cost anything. Um, and one one uh, guy from from our uh, Telegram chat from our community even called the bank, and the bank kind of explained him in a very vague way why this fee applies stuff. And he said, I don't know if he did if he did it, but in the chat he said, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna quit quit this bank and uh, and and look for another bank like or or even go Revolut full on Revolut something like that. So mm. yeah, it's interesting. So. Um, what was going to ask you? Yeah. Um, so, um, like, does the does the auto DCA already uh, work like uh, smoothly, or, or 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 do most people right now, you know, just just do a one time? Um, um, yeah. No. One. A, a lot of people. A lot of people come and they do a one time order just to check. You know, ten bucks, twenty bucks, which is totally you know understandable. They check if it actually works with a one time payment. And then, uh, but they usually come for the, the DCA payment because that, that's really where probably one of the USPs or one of the uh, uh, um, points lie where we can alleviate a lot of pain. Um, and so, yes, the, most of them are, are, are setting them up. Uh, most of them do weekly payments. And, uh, and we, so now we have like the, this, uh, the, the, the second payment for, for most of them who started early has, has gone through. Everything is. Uh, everything went well so far. We had some issues with display of, you know, the, the date sometimes mm-hmm. is, is, is displayed in the wrong way, but like, no, fr- from a transactional point of view, everything worked fine. The money flew as it should and uh, people got their Bitcoin and were happy. And so, yeah, it, okay. should, it works so far. Mm-hmm. When, um, so when, when someone gives an, uh, like puts up uh, an order or, or does an auto DCA, um, the, the price, or what do you, what do you, I don't know what, what do you call it, like, like the strike price uh, when it's bought f- through you, through, uh, through Relay, uh, is uh, what, like, where do you retrieve that price? Is that like sort of an aggregate price from, from different exchanges or from a specific exchange? So we take the price of uh, Bitty. So in the background, we are um, connected to Bitty, which is a very established Swiss uh, crypto broker. They were the, sec- the second um, uh, Bitcoin or crypto broker in Switzerland. They started in 2014. Um, so we, we wor- work very closely to them and we take the transaction data and also the price data from them. They in turn have it aggregated from different exchanges and they also have liquidity pools on different exchanges, for example, Kraken, like all the big ones. Okay, gotcha. And the um... price, strike price is taken when, uh, this is sometimes a misunderstanding, so mm-hmm. the price uh, is not fixed when you do the order, but it's taken when we or Bitty gets the money on their account then they exchange immediately and send it back to you. And when the ex- this exchange happens, then the price is, is taken. So you, you, you could, you know, if you type in an order today and then the uh, price goes down tomorrow, then you have obviously you have a lower price um, than today. Um, which is not kind of a big problem for people doing DCA because anyway, if you DCA, you do on long run, you, you put in 100 bucks every week or whatever, and then you do it for, for years, um, ideally. And then it, it really doesn't make a, a difference on which price you pay, because uh, which price do you pay? Because uh, if you, if the price is higher, then you automatically buy less. And if the price is lower, then you automatically buy more. And that's oh. the magic. That's the magic of it. So it doesn't really matter gotcha. what the price is. Mm-hmm. Uh, but still, would it theoretically be possible um, to implement a, sort of a function, a feature where, like if I wanted to, ha- to say, okay, you know what, uh, I'll, 
if the if the if the price goes like let's just say for the sake of it uh, below eight thousand euros, uh, then I would you know would be willing to buy more uh, or or more or or or, or more uh, auto DCA on on a you know on a on a um, uh, uh, in shorter intervals, you know. Would mm -hmm. would that be something like like feasible to to implement, or is that too complicated? You think you know? Yeah. Well, um, not directly, I would say. So because you we, we always require the user to to do this on this. So we don't do anything for the user because um, we you know the user should be um, should be in charge at all times. So we don't change the DCA schedule. Uh, for the user without him knowing um, or we don't take money from the user account we can't we, we, do, we don't have access to the user's bank account so uh, we, we cannot change um, kind of the user needs to change uh, himself so if he says uh, once um, the price is below 8000 then I want to have a, a weekly and not a monthly um, 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 uh, order anymore. That's what you wanted to say, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So that, that that would need an interaction of the user because we we're not um, we're not automating anything on this side because we think the user should be in charge. Uh, what what could be done, obviously, is to um, and what will be implemented in the future is is uh, push notifications. Imagine how cool it will be to get push notifications every week. Hey, your bitcoins are there. Uh, so that's what we're working on and obviously there could also be kind of price signal notifications uh, where you can say i want to get notified when the price is below eight thousand and then we notify you and then could just, you could just with one or two clicks um change your uh, dca schedule for example mm -hmm. okay do you know has mccook the preacher of auto dca has mccook have you you, you oh, probably that's... know him from twitter or you, don't, but, uh, that's you should you should check him i mean uh, he is like the one and only he's like super like an, a totally analytical you know engineering mind but yeah. he's he's done great uh you know presentations also on the value bitcoin conference on startup on you know bitcoin startups like how it evolves or how it would evolve in the next uh, you know years and decades um uh, and he's like our preacher, you know, when it comes to auto DCA, you should check in us. I'm yeah. going to do a shout out for him right now. It's his, he's also a good friend of mine. Um, and the reason I'm asking is that uh, when people like come in like noobs, you know, not like mm -hmm. not the, you know, Bitcoins like us who already know what, you know, why we're doing this, you know, this is the question why, but um, why are we, why, why would people auto DCA? How do you, how do you, I don't want to call it pitch it, but how do you, like explained what what's the rationale what's you know yeah 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 so um i you know people want to save their money right they want to invest their money so that it's it, they, they, they want to store their value so that uh, their money don't um lose it not, doesn't lose the the value so how do they do that they can obviously go to some professionals and they invest the money for them on like very complicated strategies or they can you know read books and try to time the market themselves but it requires a lot of know-how about the financial market and a lot of you know research and 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 you know the timing actually it's it's, it's impossible to time the market anyway yeah, um, and 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 so it, it's very hard to, to invest actively is very hard and it showed in traditional markets but also in crypto and bitcoin markets that in, in the last you know bitcoin 10 years but in traditional assets the last 50 years really showed that um, if you take a long enough um, range, so for example, five or 10 years, then passive strategies like DCA, uh, where you put the same amount of money every week or every month and you, you just disciplined, you, you just put this money in and forget about it and hold, are always beating the active strategies, mm -hmm. always. Like you, you, no matter what, you know, sophisticated hedge funds, uh, suit and tie guy comes and tells you, I'm going to, I'm going to beat the market. Um, uh, they don't uh, over long run, over the long run, they don't. So if, if you have a time horizon more than five years, it's always the best strategy to, to just dollar cost average. You, you take an amount that is, is uh, okay for you. Like for example, in my case, it's 50 bucks. Uh, for others, maybe more, and then you say 50 bucks every week. I put it into an asset I like, and Bitcoin obviously is the best asset uh, in in the universe right now. Uh, and then you put it there, and, and and then you leave it like this. Very disciplined. It requires a lot of discipline to even, to always take the same um, 
uh, point in time, uh, every week exactly. It should should be as exact as possible. Always the same time frame and always the same amount. Um, and then with tools like Relay, you can just automate this and forget about it. And that's why you know. And and why is it the most successful? Um, why is it the most successful strategy? It's just really because. Um, as, as I said before, whenever price is high, you buy a little bit less, and whenever price is low, you buy a little bit more. So at the end, obviously, it's quite logical that you end up with with the best return at the end. Right, right, no, amazing. Um, yeah, it's 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 a no-brainer actually. It's really a no-brainer. Um, so Julian, um, what is our roadmap for? Um, do, are you planning to Israel or your team are planning to integrate Lightning or something? Is it possible to implement integrate Lightning? Yes, we yes, uh, Lightning is definitely on the roadmap. We also have a very um, valuable partnership um, that I uh, will, that we will announce very soon. Um, a lot of people in the in Bitcoin space probably know them. They're a Swiss-based, uh, quite large, more than 100 people agency, software agency, and they do a lot of work on Lightning, on Bitcoin, but also Lightning. They're very open source oriented. Um, and they did, for example, a self-order point in Switzerland, in Bern, uh, where you can buy a sandwich and coffee and stuff with the Lightning. Uh, that kind of um, made tour on Twitter. Also, they did uh, a beer tab where you can pay with Lightning and then you get some beer out. Uh, so you, yeah, you can you can check this out. You will find easily who it is. Um, and they we have a partnership with them, uh, which we will announce soon. And later this year, hopefully by the end of the year, we will have some news on how we proceed with Lightning. So they will help us integrate Lightning. It's also very important for us, um, for our model, um, and also the, the people from the community, um, like um, like uh, Robin Torke, for example, or, or Fab the Fox uh, on, on, on Twitter, they they um, are are in our test user um, community, and they uh, helped us understand this. So they they told Great. it to us that hey, you, you guys will need to have Lightning sooner or later. Why? Because on our in our model, we do a lot of on-chain transactions now. Um, so a lot of UTXOs. If you if you imagine you do a, 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 a weekly um, payment of ten bucks, then you you amass a lot of UTXOs every week, every week. And after one year or two years, you want to make a transaction. This transaction is going to be fat. It's going to be mm. really fat, um, and it's going to cost a lot and going to take a lot of time. And then, uh, especially new users or, or also also experienced ones uh, will will get fed up with this. So that's why we should rather sooner than later integrate Lightning so that they can do this transact this big transactions through Lightning and 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 um, save beat. a lot of costs. Right? Save a lot. Yeah, yeah. The reduction of costs. Yeah. I mean, when you econ when we when you when you can economize then, and it's feasible, why not? Yeah. Um, Let's go back to Switzerland. I'm still so curious. I'm, I don't know why, but uh, is it true that Switzerland was one of the last countries to go off the gold standard? I we, we did I read that. I think it was in Bitcoin standard by Safid and Amus. Uh, you know, it's a very solid. They have you guys have a solid. Always have had a, like a solid. Uh, I don't want to call it monetary, but at least economical systems. You know, uh, yeah. quality of life. You know, like super quality of life and. Uh, can you can you talk a little bit like about the but the situation in Switzerland? How they perceive the whole situation, like macroeconomically, also? I think we really were. Uh, I think you're right that we were one of the last um, countries getting off the gold standard, and even until now, we we have a lot. Like our national bank still owns a lot of gold, um, um, and and so yeah, I think it has a lot to do. You know all these money print. I think also Saifedina Moose that um, uh, writes it very well in this book. I think a lot of these monetary policies, a lot of these um, um, countries that print a lot of money. I, I think there's even a, co a correlation that the more centralized uh, a government is, the more money they print, and the more decentralized, the less money they print. Why? Um, because in, in Switzerland, for example, as one of the most decentralized um, countries, we have a direct democracy. So we basically vote on every fucking thing. <laughs> and uh, right. and that's, uh, that's bad in some ways because it makes things slower. It's also very good in some ways because it makes decisions more rational and more you know, democratic. And here we are again. It's very 
similar in, in the Bitcoin network as well. Bitcoin is slow, but Bitcoin is the best. Uh, and it, it, and, and, we, and not, not one guy can decide um, for his um, um, uh, for his benefit something that uh, is not of benefit of all the others. So it's really, yeah, I think this democratic decentralized thing is a, is a very big topic. It, I mean, if, if I could choose, right, if, if there was no Bitcoin, if Bitcoin wasn't uh, in, in, invented yet, if I could choose which country I, uh, from a monetary um, and economical point of view, I think you know I would choose I, I would choose Switzerland definitely because they mm -hmm. do it the best way. Like they manage the money, money monetary supply and everything. They manage it just the best. So our Bundesrat, our Parliament, our our, our um, government, but also our national bank. You know they really they think about the people, not only themselves. If you go to uh, the U.S. it's different. If you go to South America or Africa, it's even way different. You know, they the the the, the rulers really only think about themselves. In Switzerland, really, like the the the, the 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 governors think about the people and about their savings. So they it, it, saving is also a huge you know thing in mm -hmm. Switzerland. I think I've read I've read the number. It's crazy. Like twenty percent. We we have a saving rate of like twenty percent. So every every fifth. Uh, Swiss franc we earn, we save. Uh, so people like to save a lot in Switzerland and, and the, the, the government also tries to foster that. It, it, and, and they would not foster it if they would devalue the money. So that's also why we have uh, comparably very, very low inflation rates. We have between one and one and a half percent inflation, sometimes even close to zero, sometimes even deflationary some years. Um, but I think the average is between one and one and a half percent, which is very, very low if you compare to all the other countries, basically. Like the effective that that would be like, I mean, that's amazing because that if that's the effective inflation rate compared to, you know, the overall, uh, because, you know, it's, we are totally like uh, uh, deceived and, and, and manipulated when it comes to inflation rate, you know, uh, uh, you know, they take the whatever uh, consumer price index and, you know, it's a total fuck up of, of uh, and, and deception. Um, so I heard, you know, that in Switzerland, the the fixed cost. I mean, you have a high quality of life. You 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 have the, the wages are pretty much pretty high, and there are some things that are actually on average much cheaper than, for example, European countries. Uh, let's say okay. I don't know. I heard about clothing or something. Is that true? Like clothing is much uh, real cheaper, but like for like, but if you go like outside, like go to a restaurant or or rent or something i mean you couldn't probably afford it as a european citizen is do you have like parallels yeah. or comparisons yes so i think that's interesting i thought i, I i'm traveling a lot and i always think you know everything is expensive in 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 switzerland but now you got me thinking i think you know stuff like clothes because where do we buy clothes we buy it on Zalando, as everybody else in Europe probably so and there the prices are probably low you know because they come from Asia and whatever um, but everything that's kind of produced in Switzerland is, is obviously very expensive so rent you know I live I live in in, in the city of Biel unknown city between Bern and Zurich um, it's a small city I, I live in in a small very small one room uh, apartment you know the so to, to, to girls that ask me, I say I live in a loft, uh, but everybody else, you know, I, it's just a very small studio. <laughs> um, um, and so maybe 50 square meters, I yeah. pay uh, more than 1000 bucks uh, a month wow. uh, okay. for rent. You know? mm -hmm. So I think that's a lot. And even in, in Zurich, if you want to live in Zurich, forget it. Like oh, for this, God. you would yeah. even pay one and a half thousand in Zurich. Um, so rent is very high. Um, health care is obviously mandatory and it's very high. I pay like maybe 300 bucks in health care insurance every month. Um, so it, yeah, so the like the fixed costs just, just to live, just to live um, like with health insurance, with a little bit of, uh, you know, uh, eating, um, at least two, two grand you have to calculate every month. Wow. But also oh, the, a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but also obviously the the wages are higher as you said. So the mm -hmm. minimum wage here, if you're really yeah, the minimum is probably something something below four thousand. 
Among. Okay, so that makes it up for, okay, got it. Mm -hmm. That's why a lot of people in the hospitality industry, right, go at least, you know, from season to season, right, to Switzerland oh, yeah. and from Austria. So, yeah. yeah. But yeah, it's a great opportunity. So um, let me ask you, are there like a lot of, uh, is there a, like when it comes to merchant adoption or adoption rate, is there, are there more and more stores or merchants accepting Bitcoin? Is, uh, what does the Switzerland look like? Switzerland, yeah, I feel like in the last couple of, in the last couple of months or half a year, maybe, I think it's picking up a lot, yes. Um, because we, you know, from, from Zook, from this, this Crypto Valley, we, we, we have a lot of startups and a lot of now quite uh, established companies that are pushing this. Um, we had some big announcement, like the, the biggest Swiss uh, online store, online shop, it's called Digitech Galaxus. And there are two stores that kind of merge. So it's the biggest uh, online shop. Um, in Switzerland, they accept Bitcoin for a couple of months now. So they announced it a couple of months ago. Um, and some governments, like government of Zug, actually accepts Bitcoin for, for taxes. Really? Wow. Uh -huh. uh, I, I don't think you can, uh, you know, all, all your taxes you can pay in, in Bitcoin, but like at least part of it, you can, you can pay in Bitcoin. On-chain um, and Lightning, or, or how do they like <laughs> transact? Like are there Lightning uh, transactions too, or, or just no, on-chain? I don't think so. I don't think so. It, it, it was more a marketing gag. Also, they had like 10 payments yet, I think. <laughs> so not a lot of people use it. So I, 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 I doubt they have lightning. Um, but yeah, you know, what else? Uh, you, uh, some universities actually um, accept Bitcoin for, for their courses, um, even full. So I, I was thinking about doing something like a, a certificate Uni further university certificate at the University of Lucerne, and they they would um, they would take Bitcoin for all of the cost for the whole cost of the course, a couple of thousand grand, a uh, couple of thousand bucks. They would accept it. What else? Some ski resorts in St. Moritz, uh, Moritz as so a very uh, renowned kind of ski region, they accept Bitcoin uh, for their um, for their tickets. So yeah, so it, it, I think it's picking up more and more. Okay, great. So, um, yeah, I'm going to go back. Yeah, this is, um, as you just see on the screen, this is Fry Hess. His name is Hess McCook, but that's his Twitter handle. And I, yeah, and I think he, he even mentioned you guys one, uh, uh, a while ago. I'm not sure when, but this is the guy, yeah. So anyway. Um, Fry or Hess? Me... Fry Hess or Hess McCook is actually his name, and he's got really wonderful presentation. You should check him out on, on YouTube or, or mm -hmm. on medium.com. And... Oh, uh, I th he's in Australia. He's in Australia. Yeah. Oh, he's we follow also, each other, actually. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's also friends with Steve Libera and all these other people. Um, so, yeah, um, um, I don't have any more questions, um, Julia. I mean, I think really you're doing, you guys are doing a great job. You're doing God's work. Uh, uh, is there anything like uh, people should know or uh, you want to prepare people for, you know, maybe in the next months or years or on the roadmap vision? <clears throat> yeah, so we have a lot of uh, things on, on the plate. Um, I think we can, if if we can get the funding we need, because up, up until now we're kind of bootstrapping, now we're in the fundraising um, process. So hopefully uh, this will go through smoothly and we, we uh, we'll have cool announcements from from people, renowned people in the Bitcoin and crypto space that are joining us as investors or as advisors in the next couple of weeks. So that's that's going to be cool. Be, be stay tuned on that, and then hopefully we get enough money to really for one year we can really uh, develop, 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 and make the product even better, um, way better. I think we can we can still do a lot to perfectionize uh, it. Um, what else? Yeah, there there. There are different things on the roadmap, like UX, UI improvements, and more payment methods, for example, as I said, Lightning, um, open banking integrations, so that you can make the payment within the app. Um, these are only, only a few of the things. We are also always very, very open to the community. Uh, you can all join the Telegram chat or WhatsApp chat. You can uh, text us on, uh, on Twitter or whatever we, we are. Uh, reading everything and getting all the, the, the feedback and the, uh, suggestions for improvements um, so that we can really uh, shape the, 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 the best Bitcoin um, investing experience service in the world. Um, that's, yeah, that's basically what I, what I would say. Um, 
is it your ambition like that more people also like outside the European Union or Europe you know come on your platform like whatever like from Canada Australia United States or Eastern countries yeah you know I think um, they all all of them have very good services already um, okay. so, so uh, you know Swan Bitcoin in in um, America, um, there's Amber in Australia. I think Canada, there's some some more. So they have already quite cool um, services. Um, we really try to focus on Europe at least yeah. for the next year yeah. um, um, to to uh, to perfect the product. But uh, I mean, it's always possible to extend it. We, technically, we're scalable um, to the whole world, and that's also what the long-term ambition is. Obviously, that everybody mm -hmm. can use our service because, especially for you know, as I said before, Africa or South America, I think that for them it would be really, really helpful. I mean, for us here, it's a cool service, right? To 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 better save our money. For them, it's actually a necessity. Like they need mm -hmm. services like this because otherwise they could just they could just not save and 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 and, um, and feed their families. So for them, it's really a necessity. That's also why we have a big motivation to go there, but it's very complicated. You know, it's very complicated from a regulatory point of view and, and, and from a from banking system, financial system point of view, it's quite, quite hard to, to get their money to, to us. So, they, you know, so that's, mm -hmm. that's things that we, uh, we, we definitely uh, have a look at this um, uh, to, to expand. But uh, in the next year, probably you can expect to really, really focus on Europe, make perfect, um, perfect product here and then maybe uh, go on to other countries okay so before we wrap up one final question i mean uh do you uh like you know buying you know pe people buy their usually their or they uh, a lot of people like buy bitcoin on an exchange or you know and then they get into this rabbit hole of of, of uh, security privacy like is education about storage like harder wallets multi-sig or you know privacy security is that something you want to like cooperate with other educators or do you want to like offer your own educational platform because the thing is really essential to absolutely you know... absolutely no we we really want to do cooperation there and then uh, be, be part of the community that's why we really are happy to go on every podcast um we we do. We do. Uh, we we will launch a known uh, podcast soon where we interview, you know, in, important people, in uh, experienced people in the crypto space about these topics for 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 new newcomers, so that newcomers can check it out. Very small and easy, easy to process content. Um, we we are happy to write articles for for media outlets in the crypto space or whatever. We don't. It's not our priority to. Um, to produce a lot of content ourselves. Obviously, we will have a blog uh, where where the, the basics are explained, but I think there are already very, very good things out there. It's just a matter of pointing the people to the right um, to the right sources and also right. you know support these these sources that, that do a great job in the community. For example, you know, Bitcoin Asho in, in, in Germany, for example, they're doing a great job educating you you guys like you, you're doing a great job educating people. So I think these these should be should be supported, um, and, and that's that's what we yeah that's what we try uh, try to do. Um, I think all of the, this is this is a community effort to everybody. You know, if if you are an experienced guy and you use our service and you recommend it to uh, to some someone else, also explain him how it works and why it's important to have this this the, the private key secured and uh, and things like that. Okay, gotcha. One more final question, <laughs> real final question. Julian, what is what is your vision for Bitcoin? I mean, uh, in, 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 where do you see where do you see society or humanity in ten years or let's I don't know let's just call it in ten years, like if with the development with the pace of development and you know everything is going on crazy, uh, what what is the vision for you? Like if you had to visualize it, what what is what is it that why are we doing Bitcoin? What is it what is it about Bitcoin that that inspires you or motivates you? Well, it really there I'm really. Uh, into into cipher D, into the cipher Dean, um Amu's uh, vision, where I think Bitcoin will just be the the, the base, not even cur currency, but like just the base store of value. Like whenever you uh, don't use your money for anything, you want to store your wealth, you do it in Bitcoin because it's just simply the best asset in the world. I don't think anything will be even some some new things that uh, will be invented. You you never know, but it. It, uh, I, I, I doubt that uh, a better asset will, will come, soon, come around soon. 
So I think the next 10 to 20 years will be really around uh, about switching from this old broken kind of, you know, outdated financial system um, that doesn't make sense for, for most of the people to switch, to, to make the swift to this um, uh, standard, uh, new standard again, which will be like gold standard uh, again. And as Saifedean writes in his book, um, this will help us to to kind of have a new start and have a gold standard again, where we can prosper again, where social, um, where communities, uh, yeah, will, will, will thrive again and where we'll have stable economies and not boom and bust cycles and, and, and investment, bank, investment banks and, and, and politicians that get very rich and all the others get very poor and a big, a big uh, gap, but, uh, but really have a, have a fair system that's, uh, that's open for everybody. And then obviously you can think about crazy, crazy stuff as well. I mean, I could also, um, I could also imagine that Bitcoin and the Bitcoin blockchain will just serve as the single, as a single source of truth, like not only for monetary transactions, but for all transactions. Like for example, you know, the internet, there are cool projects like Blockstack that are trying to build a new internet on the Bitcoin blockchain. I could imagine that all, you know, that, that we do transactions, identity transactions, for example, that we now do with governments, um, that we will do that on the Bitcoin uh, blockchain because it's it's more censorship resistant or like real estate uh, transactions that we buy and sell real estate on, on, on the Bitcoin blockchain because it's just, it cannot be censored. It cannot be influenced by some, some author, authoritarian um, um, regimes like for example if in Russia you 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 buy a, you buy a big house then maybe tomorrow Vitalik Putin comes and takes it away from you and all the documentation is just lost <laughs> nobody knows that's actually your house um, but with the Bitcoin blockchain then you can you can really um, prove your um, your assets your uh, proper properties your identity whatever you can just prove there it's kind of single uh, single source of truth I think that's uh, that that would be a, a world I would kind of like to live in. So let's try to work on that. Mm. I always knew Vitaly Putin is a communist man. <laughs> so anyway, all right. Oh, sorry. Who, what, what did I say? Did you say Vitaly Putin? Did you say Vitaly Putin? I don't know. Sorry. That's funny. Okay, yeah. so where, where, where can uh, my, my followers uh, find you or, or, or uh, find more information? I'm going to put those in the show notes, but why don't you just say it? Yeah, um, I'm, I'm uh, on Twitter. Relay is on Twitter. Relay uh, uh, underline a CH. Um, then within the app, you can actually send me an email. It's julian at relay.ch or you can join one of our um, uh, chats, uh, which uh, we, we're on Telegram um, and on WhatsApp. You can directly just join the chats within the app. Um, yeah, that's probably the, the best ways to, to reach us. Yeah. We awesome. have a website, obviously, relay.ch. .ch. All right. Gonna put on the show notes. Well, Julian, I really enjoyed our talk. Uh, you know, uh, find, you know, he, listening a little bit to you about the background, also about because uh, I've always been curious about Switzerland, and you're doing a great job. I think it's 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 uh, yeah, it's a platform. It's it's uh, urgently needed. And I think if people understand more and more the question why why we're we doing this, you know, why to accumulate out to DC or whatever, invest into Bitcoin like slowly and then gradually, you know, and then suddenly, <laughs> uh, we will we will get there. You know, so uh, the sooner the better. Okay, Absolutely. Julian. I very, very uh, appreciated your invite, and then very, very much enjoyed uh, our conversation. Hey, and if you if you're ever around in, in Switzerland, please uh, come visit us in, in our office, and we can do a session together. And I can, um, yeah, I can uh, buy you a, a six six Swiss franc uh, coffee here in Zurich. <laughs> awesome. We'll enjoy that. All right, Cheers. Julian. Thanks so much. All right. Take care. Have a good one. Bye. Cheers. Thanks, man. Cheers. Uh, that was a very fascinating talk. Uh, oh, never been to Switzerland, so hope you loved it. Um, yeah, um, make sure you follow uh, Julian Liniger on Twitter. Uh, the website is relay.ch. Put, put those in the show notes. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. My email is hello at thetotalconnector.com, or you can find me on Twitter, LinkedIn, uh, Telegram, uh, what have you. And yeah, uh, thanks so much again for listening and for your support. And let me know your 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 wish list, you know, for any special guests I should bring on. And 
My name is Kevin Navani, the Total Bitcoin podcast uh, show moderator, the Total Connector. See you soon.